And you were talking in that about how, uh, I think as you said, when you got knocked out of Geneva and how when you first came into the sport, you oh, you were God. trying like really hard. Like you put a lot of pressure on yourself and you felt like maybe looking back, you like were r trying too hard, I guess. And I'm curious yeah. your take on this because we see this kind of like revolving door of like more or less highly touted amateurs fizzling out as they get to pros now. And they're trying to solve it yeah. with like combines and, you know, supercross futures and help bridge right. that gap. But I'm, I'm, you said as well that like lately you've, you've kind of taken like a different mental page out of yourself to, you know, try to enjoy more things and almost reset a little bit. And looking right. back on that time, do you think it would benefit some of these 250 teams to almost like have a mental coach or something like that as part of their programs to help these amateur kids when they, they turn pro that like not everything needs to be as, as high stress as you were? Well, I think it, it's all about it's all about how you're raised. Right. And, um, you know, I, I think for me, I just didn't have, I didn't have a lot of, I guess, emotional tools to work with. You know, I kind of lived and I, and for the most part, like I was about it, you know, I, I went all in really, really, really young. And, you know, it, it seemed like a job to me at like 10, even though I still liked it, you know, I, I wanted to be the best. So I was down for it. It wasn't necessarily the work that got to me. It was kind of, I guess, um, I guess the environment and, you know, when you're in that environment, kind of a hostile environment as a kid, you can start to, you know, obviously you've heard the stories with, you know, it's, it's not just motocross. It's just, um, you know, burnout is prevalent in every sport and, and there's a reason why, and it's just a lack of balance. You know, I just didn't really have any balance in my life. And I put everything on racing. Like that was who I was. And I didn't really have anybody else to tell me otherwise. So that's the kind of thing that kind of trans, you know, as you get older and you, you those things are kind of adopted into how you are. It's not like they just go away as you get older and smarter. It's, um, you know, it requires work to kind of reverse some of the ways of, of thinking and be like, you know, I, I can, you know, I can, I can fail at this or, you know, I can get fifth place or, you know, not reach my goals. And like, I'm still an okay dude. Like I'm, I still, uh, you know, have like, I still have value. Like I'm still a decent person. It's not, you know, it's not an attack on who I am. And, you know, when you're going to the gate every weekend, you know, feeling like I said in the podcast, like you have a gun to your head, like this is everything. Yeah. It, you know, it, you start to hate it. And like, I always, I always, you know, I always tell people like, I should have been a burnout. Like I should have quit. Like there was a, there was a lot of times, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old where I was like, I don't think I can do another day. Of this. Like I really don't, but I wanted, I wanted to be a pro and I wanted it. I had, you know, I was a determined guy, stubborn guy. And I wanted it so bad that I, that I pushed through that stuff. And you know, basically, you know, kind of where I'm at now is a lot of the, you know, a lot of that stuff from childhood has affected my, my racing, but also just my quality of life. So that's kind of these last couple of years for me is just really getting to the bottom of that, really just rewiring my brain. And, um, I guess going back to your original point, I think it's just all about, you know, kids having balance. Like it's not necessarily the work, it's the relationship with the work in their minds. Mm -hmm. But you don't think that like even having, you know, someone to springboard ideas off of more so, and you don't feel like you have to go to the team for it. It's more just they're there for you as, hey, like this is what I'm feeling, and then that person can tell you, okay, let's work through those things together instead of. For you know, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think any type of mental work like that is, you know, obviously there's the there's a stigma around stuff like therapy and even even throw on even it's scary to say you even have a sports psychologist because that somehow implies that you're weak and right. not you know it's it's just like working out a muscle in the gym and you know i certainly wish i had somebody to bounce stuff off of like that when i was you know with the resources and kind of you know the emotional intelligence to, to help me through that so i definitely would advocate for for really any type of um you know exercising your mind you know is you know, as a kid, for sure. I uh, I love Eric Pernard. I've known him forever. And your injury in 